and some kid's going to hold up a phone and I'm going to be naked on it. And they're going to say, your mom's pussies on the internet. Your wardrobe screams fatherless. You have more trust in that top side than people. Disgusting. How was your relationship with your father? Next. Just saying, why did you get the attention you wanted? You need Jesus. That's offensive. All right, hello. I'm I'm still trying to figure out a name for everyone. That's offensive squad, the OF, OF oh, yeah. squad. <laughs> I've been it. trying to figure something <laughs> out to get people like, you know, call her daddy is like daddy gang. Right. Yeah. But I just don't have that. <laughs> oh. Maybe like the two squad, like that's offensive T O. T O? What's up, T O? What's up, T O? Okay, maybe. maybe yeah. yeah. I love doing that stuff. Let's <laughs> let me know what y'all think in the comments. But I have some fun guests with me today. It's a mother daughter duo, Mrs. Robinson and Amber Blake. Hi. Hi, Hi everybody. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm like getting stage fright and there's no one here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that with like all of these lights mm -hmm. pointed at you, yeah. it just it gets sometimes a little claustrophobic. It's just, it's yes. Some type of way. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys both get into OnlyFans as like a mother daughter duo? And I want to like clarify, I don't mean they make content together. They're actually very yeah. specific that they will not show up in content together. Right, ever. exactly. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I started doing OnlyFans first, and I am a 52-year-old mom who came from corporate America and was super mm -hmm. vanilla and um, started doing OnlyFans, you know, back in the beginning when it was really, like, booming. Yeah. And so Amber wasn't doing it at the time, but she was completely fine with it. Um, my teenager at the time was, you know, t and still is totally fine with it. We're from a very open family. We talk about everything. And it's it's funny because, um, you know, anytime we talk on podcasts or any type of interview, the mm -hmm. comments are always, your teenager isn't okay with it and they're just not telling you. And people don't understand that that's not the case. We're that open yeah. Yeah. that if my kid were not okay with it, my kid would say so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Have you guys always had such an open relationship? Yeah. yeah. From okay. the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been like that. Like, it was never like, oh, I don't know if I can talk to my mom in high school and like grade school in general. My friends would be like, how do you talk to your mom about all this stuff? And I'm like, how do you not? Yeah. Just because it was so normalized. I, like, I didn't mean to like shame anyone. It's just that's how our family functions. Yeah. And it was seriously based be on growing up without my parents being like that. I always mm -hmm. swore I was going to be honest and open and transparent with my kids. Like, when she had her first gynecologist appointment, she wanted me in the room. Yeah. And I would have died Aww. if my mom were, would have been in the room. Like, yeah. I was not that. My mom and I are close now, but in a different way. And, the, you know, back then, you just didn't, you weren't open with your kids. And mm -hmm. so, um, but that's one of the biggest misconceptions that there's no way your teenager's okay with that. They're going to get bullied. My mm -hmm. kid does not get bullied that I am. Mm -hmm. Are we able to say, like, and like anything on here or oh yeah yeah okay we can you say guys, fuck and... you guys can fuck shit <laughs> all right yeah. all right guys okay. yeah, all right. Anal. yeah like my kid does not get bullied because his mom is having sex on the internet and mm -hmm. so um people are like yeah he is but but anyway yeah so i started doing only fans and it went really really well and it really blew up and you know, it's funny. Yesterday, when we were all together hanging out, I was on live on like TikTok or something, and people were coming in. And the there's a subset of like um, trolls. You know how the yeah. trolls are, yeah. and they're always like, "Ooh, you're so old. Who would buy your content?" Uh -huh. And when I first started, I was like, "Nobody's gonna buy my content because society thinks." They only want to see younger girls and mm -hmm. that is not the case like if you go to Pornhub and you you look at what people are buying and consuming mm -hmm. milfs cougars stepmoms are at the very top like above younger girls and yeah um so anyway there is a market for that but it always makes me laugh when people are like you're so old like I know. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. That's kind of my thing. <laughs> like, yeah. So I did that. I've done a little mainstream porn. Um, 
I was nominated for an AVN this year for Hottest MILF. Um, mm -hmm. Rudy was I don't there. Know. Yeah, my dog was there because it was <laughs> done virtually. So that was kind of cool. So is AVN just for OnlyFans people or Pornhub or what is it for? So AVN um, is the biggest award uh, ceremony every year for uh, porn. Is that the one where like Riley Reed was wearing like those pasties everywhere? Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Like a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was it's before it. I like really knew who she was. I thought it was like the Grammys or something, and I'm like, who would wear that to the Grammys? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the Porn Star Award show, and I'm like, well, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So that was really cool. Like such a big honor. Um So are you in the mainstream world and OnlyFans then? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. Which I one do you think makes you more money? OnlyFans. Only fans? Yeah, for all porn stars. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. There's not a All ton. porn stars? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would think that there'd be like a select few that might... Okay. Yeah, no, because what happens when you shoot mainstream porn, you get a certain amount of money, you don't get royalties. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it gets your name out there. And, you know, some people will say, oh, well, your money will go down on OnlyFans if you do mainstream. And that's not the case because people don't come... You guys know this. There's a misconception. Mm -hmm. Like, why would people pay for OnlyFans when they can go on Pornhub for free? They're two totally different things. If yeah. a guy wants to jerk off his cock and leave, like, hurry it up. I got to go to work. Jerk it off. Dip out. Mm -hmm. He goes to Pornhub. A guy who wants to have a relationship with us online mm -hmm. comes to OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, the whole girlfriend experience is yeah, really yeah. big. And they want that engagement, that authentic, like, who we really are. And that's what I... I love about it and I'm sure mm -hmm. you guys do too yeah. so there's no mm -hmm. you know they see me in the mainstream porn scenes but they still come to my OnlyFans because you know I interact with them and I really I care about them it's it's yeah. weird how that happens yeah. you know you get fans and they're like god I have to have surgery and I'm like it's gonna be okay <laughs> you know <laughs> you're gonna live yeah. Yeah. yeah like I'm very motherly to a lot of them uh -huh. and so do you think awesome. a lot of the people who sub to you have like mommy issues that they're like, please mother me? Um, yeah, they either have mommy issues. Well, not mommy. <laughs> I don't want to say that because it's like sounds derogatory, but they have, you know, a thing for, yeah, like the Stifler's mom from, you know, what it was that American Pie. And then you have people who had fantasies about their teachers. And I used to be a teacher in my oh, 20s. Yeah. So I do a lot of stepson content because. The divorce rate is up. People get remarried and then they have fantasies about their stepmoms. Uh -huh. So I play that out and there's a lot of teacher fantasy and then the mommy stuff and people ask all the time, are you going to film with your daughter? Like, fuck never. no. Literally <laughs> so never. Foul. It's disgusting. Like, like, that's no. It's we just don't... because people don't think that we're actually related, you know, because so... that's so played out. Like, the stepmom, stepdaughter. I mean, it's uh -huh. not played out. It works. But, like, that, that's not what we are. Like, it's mother-daughter. It's not stepmother, <laughs> stepdaughter. And it's like, I came out of her. I'm not going back in. You <laughs> know, like, literally right. incest at that point. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll do, like, funny pictures, like, on the holidays or, like, hey, we just woke up on Christmas. Like, and... normal pictures. Yeah, Not nude or like even lingerie for like family events, like just normal. And they right. like to see that. Yeah. yeah. So what was like the conversation like when you were like, I am thinking about starting an OnlyFans because you, you said that you were like the picture perfect mom. Yeah, I really I really was, wasn't I? Like, <laughs> um, we live in a suburban bubble and um, I you know, was the main chaperone for all of, You're in you know, the kids kids everything. Things. Yeah, I was just very involved <laughs> as your typical suburban mom. And so I went to Amber and I'm like, hey, what do you think about me doing OnlyFans? And she said, do it, mom. If that's going to make you happy, that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you think about, you know, my 14 year old at the time? And we were like, yeah, that's, you know, because I would not have done it if my child wasn't okay with it. And then yeah. people are like, why would you let your child determine that? And I'm like, because it would affect my kid more than me. Yeah. And so we were sitting at the dinner table. I've told the story a couple of times. And I'm like, hey, what do you think about mom doing OnlyFans? <laughs> like spit out his water. And he's like, mom, you're pretty for mom. For mom. <laughs> yeah. And then gestured toward me and goes, do you think they want to see that? And I'm like, <laughs> I actually don't, but the, I'm hearing they do. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, get that bag, mom. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to come back to you in a few days to make sure you're really okay with it because you might think about it and then say, you know what? I'm not cool with it. And then mm -hmm. I would wait until 
you know, they turned 18. And after a few days, I went back and I'm like, hey, so that OnlyFans thing. Mm -hmm. And they're like, how's it going? And I'm like, I didn't start it yet. I said, do you really understand? You're going to walk into school and some kid's going to hold up a phone and I'm going to be naked on it. And they're going to say, your mom's pussies on the internet. And very calmly, my then 14 year old said, mom, why do you care what people think? And it like reverberated through my entire body because I did care for my whole life what everybody thought of me. So, so many OnlyFans girls say, oh, it's so empowering what I'm doing, but it's the truth. Like, so empowering. Isn't it? Most yeah. people just, I mean, I grew up in a very Christian, very mm -hmm. Christian household. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where if I even wore too short of shorts, I'd have like my dad saying like, no one's going to want to date you kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when I was able to like start showing off my body and it's weird because I think men want to date me more now that I have an OnlyFans than they did before. It's yes. actually opened up my options, although I don't like any of my options <laughs> still. <laughs> right. <It's like> that <laughs> confidence factor. Confidence yeah. is sexy. Yeah. Confidence yeah. is sexy and being like that true authentic version mm -hmm. of yourself. And it's like, I think at least the men that I would have been interested in and in the first place like it was a turnoff that I was in a job that I hated it yeah. was a turnoff that yes. I hated my life and yeah. now it's like a turn on that I'm like over here doing everything that I love to do mm -hmm. and it's like it's also a turn on for me seeing other guys yes do what they love to do mm -hmm. I'm like you could be making a hundred dollars a yep. week but if you're doing something you love like that's so hot yeah. yes and it's so authentic like that's it's the authenticity factor of it too it's so hot to be able to just be yourself and I don't know. We get you guys know we all get messages like, yeah, do it. Like, mm -hmm. who cares what people think? And mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. always like that. So, uh huh. Yeah. But um, again, when my child said that, that was the moment that fundamentally changed the course of my entire life. And I said, fuck it. And I just went and I lost friends. Well, not real friends, obviously. Yeah. They stopped talking to me. They judged me. How could you do this? And then I lost a lot more. When she started doing it, because they were saying to me, she's 25. Uh -huh. They would 24 say 24 at the time. 24 at the time. How could you let your daughter do this? She's 24. Like, what am I going to say? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you can't do this. Yeah. So. And people probably assume, because, like, you see mother daughter do on OnlyFans, right. which I think is pretty unheard of. Yes. Um, And then they think that you, like, were trying to exploit her. You were trying to bully her. Because yep. you yeah, see no. all those, like, dance moms for example like the the tv show yeah every single one of those moms is exploiting their daughters Absolutely. yeah i was offered to be on it and my mom was like no i don't right. feel comfortable yeah. exploiting you like that that's right yeah, we do um i'm a, i went to school for musical theater and we always say like she's not mama rose like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like i'm my own person i decided to do it it's actually like quite the opposite she tried to convince me to not do uh -huh. it um because she said you're so young like there's so much ahead of you you just need to realize like how big of a commitment this is to the rest of your life and i was like just so i was i was looking up to her so much for how much she stopped giving a fuck mm -hmm. because Aww. when i started to do only fans i started to realize that i also cared so much about what people thought about me even though my whole yeah. life i thought oh i don't care what people think about me i'm doing what i want blah blah yeah. blah <laughs> um but then once I started doing it and actually not giving a fuck, I was like, oh, shit, this is what it's like to, like, actually like yourself and, like, <laughs> do what you want to do. Like, have that revelation that's like, oh, my gosh, I can just do what I want like, yeah, yeah, and right? not worry about, like, what other people are going to say or do. Uh -huh. It's just it's there's been so much that energy um, radiates so much more success, too, mm -hmm. even yes. though, like porn and the adult industry in general um people have such a negative like society has such a negative um view on it but yeah. um it's like honestly the energy of it is what makes it so successful because people just don't fucking care what other other people think and you know? i think a lot of people like to make up stuff about the porn industry too yeah. like i've seen so many articles about how women are raped in porn or women are abused in porn trafficked. and like yeah. trafficked in porn and i see all of this stuff but i've been in the industry for over a year and if it, it's happening it's not the majority like i would say it's like a minority like i mm -hmm. think i was probably sexually harassed more just working as a salesperson going door to door from or like yeah. workers Absolutely. and i'm like people in the industry mainly understand consent like i mean there are some boundaries being pushed sure. but a lot of the time it's like it's talked about after it's or yeah. beforehand are you comfortable with this yes. yes and the std thing people say all the time oh they probably have every disease we're the most protected mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. subset 
community, we're tested all the time. Um, you know, I've never come back positive from shooting with people that have been shooting for years. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, it's not a job. Like I am so tired. <laughs> Our last few days How together. Dare you? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so much more tired than I was working. You know, doing Madison Avenue like advertising. I'm so exhausted. I think a mm -hmm. lot of the like misconception comes from like old. My, like old porn stuff because you know like the creepy director and like yeah. oh do you want to fuck me to be in this scene like that stuff happened like years and years and years like I, decades I, I do have to say it does still have I've heard you know a handful yeah. of things that yeah. have happened but like that was more prevalent that, yeah but yeah. like Adelia said it's the minority like, yeah, it is a minority and I think like I mean how can you do be do or how can you be doing <laughs> stuff like that with social media now? Yes. Because I think everyone who does that kind of shit, it's out there. Yeah, yeah you can exactly. find you can find articles about them on Reddit. You can find articles about them on like Twitter other news sources. Them. Yeah, Twitter blasts. Like, <laughs> right. I don't think you can get away with that anymore. Yeah, nope. So it's like for and I like I even saw this like TikTok comment being like, I will only be friends with people trying to leave the sex work industry because it's so harmful for the empowerment of women and the women are abused there. And I'm like. No, it's not. And honestly, the more legal sex work is, the yes. more safe it is for everybody. So to That's try right. to yeah. push down sex workers, it only makes it a more dangerous environment. And I, I just, agree. I just don't think people understand. Like, do they not understand, like, the abuse that goes on in corporate America? Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, there's yeah. so many documentaries about all of the harassment and all of that stuff that goes on. And it's just like... It's not just the sex worker industry, like the adult industry. Like, yeah, it is sex work. So then you're thinking about it when you're thinking about the industry. But like mm -hmm. that happens in every industry. It's every just industry. amplified with this one because that's the focus of it is exactly. that it's sex. You're not like, oh, I'm a mar I'm a marketing agent. Sex. Like, no. Do you know what I mean? But it's still happening there. Yeah, a thousand percent. When I worked at my door to door sales job and I don't want this person to get in trouble at all. But my boss and I used to joke a lot about like me flashing my tits or blowing someone to like close the sale that right. was only going to make like a thousand a week yes. and i would only be getting like not even a hundred a week of that you know and yes. it's like we would joke about that shit all the time and i'm like for the little amount of money it was to do that yes but we would like joke about it but i don't want him to feel like like i would yeah. joke no, about it too joke. yeah it was completely a joke but it's like I feel like that happened way more for Absolutely. way yeah. less at Consensual corporate. Consensual joking. Yeah. yeah. Consensual <laughs> joking. For sure. And and I can tell you, when you walk onto a, a mainstream porn set, too, this was really wonderful. Like, you walk on and everybody, you say what you're comfortable with, um, what you're not comfortable with, and then they actually record you before and after were you coerced? Did you feel uncomfortable? So everything is on record. And so signing it too. Yeah, and signing it. So they're very careful. Um, I've never felt unsafe on a porn set. I've mm -hmm. never felt um I've never felt unsafe in OnlyFans world either. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just oh, and then they they'll say, Oh, these women, meaning like the three of us here, have no respect for themselves to do this. <laughs> like based on what? And they're then they say, Oh, you know, they don't have any morals. And I don't know who's running the moral police <laughs> or who made the list of what morality is, but I actually looked it up. I'm a big like, okay, if they're saying I have no morals, maybe they're right. I, I think know it's not. based <laughs> off of Christianity and how big Christianity is in the U.S. Because yeah. yes. they also use Christianity as yes. a way to shit on gay people, to shit on porn stars. It's like a weapon. To shit on, like, they're trying to ban books in a lot of states. They're trying to not let <laughs> trans kids have rights in some states because it's against the Bible. Although the Bible doesn't mention most of that as a sin. No. no. In fact, um, my then 14 year old came out as transgender over um last summer mm -hmm. and so i'm fighting a big battle in our school district right now because um a storybook was read to a class and one of the characters just so happened to be transgender there mm -hmm. was no like teaching of the concept of here's what transgender is here's what it means here's it was what just, to do yeah it was like... just a book there was a kid in it one of the characters happened to be transgender and so we're in this big battle and like the people on the other side are all Christian fundamentalists. They're, they're yeah. all battling on the right of religion or on the side of religion. And I'm like, my kid has listened to books about um, non-transgender kids their entire life. Mm -hmm. And so, like, why can't there be one fucking book, you know, for this? Yeah. It, it's just terrible what 
what they think it's and so bad like it it's, is so bad it's so out of hand they keep comparing like we should be able to have the ability as parents to teach these morals to our kids when we choose to and it's like this isn't about morals this is about saying that you don't think that like my little sister should have should like that her existence is legitimate like that's yeah. not yeah. the same thing and then they say why can't we celebrate holy week and it's like separation of church and state that's not the yeah, same thing totally different. you can't change mm -hmm. your race you can't change your gender identity you can't mm -hmm. change um your yeah like your your gender like yes that's, mm -hmm. that's what's that's innate but like religion's a choice yeah. do you know what i mean it's like you can't change that stuff sorry not to get all into the intense yeah. stuff oh, i get good. so fired yeah. up no yeah. i do too i i yeah so what did you find out about morality i kind of cut you yeah. off when you oh, like, no, no, no. Oh, that's sorry. okay no so morality and you know everybody listening can go and look it up morality is you know putting your shopping cart back treating people kindly the way you treat the server is um you know treating people with respect and just being a good human and it, it had nothing to do with you shouldn't do porn you shouldn't um be gay it, there was nothing about morality that had anything to do with sexuality it was mm -hmm. how you are as a person yeah. and from the time my kids were little every single day i would say especially um when my younger child would get out of the car i would say work ha work hard be kind, help others. So do you mm -hmm. help people? Do you, um, you know, reach out, help people who need it? Are you, um, I don't know, are you helpful in your home? Are you, what are the other things? Like, but they're all- Basically, it's just who you are, not what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like... I was thinking about it, like with this podcast, thinking about what I find offensive and what I find offensive, you know, <laughs> I'll talk about it later, but mm -hmm. like, fucking mean people there are mean fucking people like innately mean yeah. yeah i get that offends me like life's hard everybody watching this and all of us like it's challenging we're all fighting our own battles and we need to lift each other up and morality is based on that it's not based on um your christian values like mm -mm. that's a whole separate thing morality is are you a good human that's what it all boiled down to and they had a list of things I'll have to look it up again, but it's a whole list of things that boil down to yeah. just be a good fucking person. And I think people always like label having sex with a lot of people as being a bad person. And uh, unless it's like harming someone, like yes. I don't even think it's being a bad person. Like there can arguably, arguably be like, let's just say someone has like an STD and yes. like they don't tell someone. But on the other side, someone can be taking the pill so they don't spread it. So yes. it's like, do they like, you know, there's there's always like the back and forth of yeah. like, that's not really being a bad person. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I mean, every I, I think I heard that there's like this high percentage. People have herpes. They have genital wars. They have HPV. It's very prevalent. And none of that makes somebody a bad person. And I, I just yeah. don't get the judgment whatsoever. Yeah. So people are so judgmental. Like the so internet judgmental. has made the world like, I feel like everyone is so, has already been judgmental, but now it's on blast. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Cause everyone can now see and they can band up together on the internet and like be judgmental together. And it just is so insane. Like it's, it's actually crazy. Cause like, I mean, my TikToks that blow up the most are the ones where I like kind of shit on men because then they like fight in the comments mm -hmm. because yeah. they're like, well, men are who pay your bills, men, blah, blah, oh. blah, or like not all men. And I'm like, where did I say all men? Right. Where are those words in my comments? That's right. <laughs> I remember I made a joke. It was like a, it was a TikTok about something about consent or it's, it, you know, that song that's like, isn't it easy? And yeah. it was like a trend. And I'm like, when um, I get consent to touch someone before I touch them. And I was like, isn't it in that s sparked up? outrage in my i didn't even mention men wow yeah what? <laughs> and that sparked outrage mm -hmm. to oh the point God. like it got a lot of views it got a lot of comments it got a lot of men just randomly being like men get sexually assaulted just as much as women and i'm like i don't even know where they're getting this all from yeah. but let me yeah. comment <laughs> all of the on all of this yeah, yeah. because like controversy is like the best publicity sometimes. yeah because <laughs> uh -huh. like when are men scared to go out on the streets because there's a woman walking towards them and granted if men are getting sexually assaulted i know like the percentage sure. isn't nearly as much as women but it's still very serious like yes look at that guy jack on tiktok with like sienna may yes, when yes. he got sex there was outrage so it's it's just as big of a deal 
I just don't think it's as common because women are more emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't think that's even debatable. Women are more emotionally intelligent overall. Yes. Yeah. And that goes all the way back to the whole caveman thing. And it's proven. It's just two men innately are and women innately are. And I am so stuck on Johnny Depp TikTok right now with that whole case with Amber Heard. (laughs) And, you know, I've picked a side and it is Jack Sparrow's side. (laughs) Um, And, you know, women do have the capacity to be, you know, abusive or to sexually harass. But again, like you guys said, it's just not as prevalent. Mm -hmm. It's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And like men always talk like these men are so like toxic that have this mindset. Do you know what I mean? Like with the like. I'm a man and you're a woman, but then they also would turn around and be like, oh, but then men get sexually assaulted as well. It's like, you need to pick one. Like, are you (laughs) saying that like we're lesser than you or like you're scared of us? Like, what is it? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) you can't be both. (laughs) I had someone comment. So we had done a um, a podcast, you know, the one I was telling you, we did a podcast. Uh Um, It was a pretty big one. We got, you know, we had a lot of positive support in the comments. It went viral. We got a lot of views and Mm -hmm. um and I engaged in the comments. And I always say I only engage in negativity. You know those times where you just like kind of lose your shit and you like <laughs> argue with people on the internet. I only do it like once every three months. But I knew in order to drive up engagement on the podcast that I oh, was yeah. going to engage in the positive comments. And there were a few that had these things they thought were facts. They're like, oh my gosh, they're spiritual. They are spiritually bankrupt because they do this. And how dare she she inherently encouraged her daughter to do porn which is not the case and Mm -hmm. but they have these things they believe is like bible that aren't it's just not real and then they call it prostitution and (laughs) oh my god and then that's another thing they pick out the weirdest Mm -hmm. shit Mm -hmm. to um kind of lambaste us the one podcast we were on, they're like, look how she drinks water about me. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm not going to be self-conscious about it. I'm not going to change it. Like, yeah. I want to just go, leave me alone. Like, I'm not hurting you. If you're offended by me, don't watch me. They mm-hmm. love to come up with their own narratives. They were like, look at the way that Amber is sitting next to her. It's clear that she harassed her to be there and she doesn't want to. <laughs> like, this whole narrative. And I was like. What, like I just have resting bitch face. I'm sorry. It's been my whole life. They're actually a uh, future of exclusivity on their Instagram. They uh-huh. posted like a picture from one of the things that we did, mm-hmm. and um, my face. I literally am like this, and they said. <laughs> Josh Amber Blake did. looks cold and miserable. And thought, like we laughed so we hard. We died so it's hard. So on brand. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, so I think it's really funny that some people want to talk about like no morality or you can't be like very spiritual if you're yeah. sexual. And I think it's like I think some of the most spiritual people are very in tune with their sexuality. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like I think a lot of the people who are the most confident and the most like you see them in a room and they just like. Yes. There's an energy about them. And a lot of them are just very in tune with their sexuality and can like show it however they want. Like yes. I'm still working on even like fully embracing my sexuality. I mm-hmm. know there's like a lot of trauma energy to move. For yeah. sure. But like once all of that's dealt with, like, you know, I think there's just going to be a different energy about me. Yes. I mean, sexual energy is the most vulnerable state that you can be in. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And so to be so in tune with your like your sexual desires and like yourself as like a woman is like the base level do you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so if you're there that i i don't know it's just yeah yeah just the misconceptions about Mm -hmm. all of it are they're wild to read and i'm like that's actually not true (laughs) Uh i I don't want to argue with you but you've got it all wrong Mm -hmm. and we're very we do know who we are and we're not perfect and you know it's so funny because we spend so much time like talking about misconceptions and stuff and like it would seem like it bothers us but it's just fucking annoying it's like can you just like shut the fuck up like it's just (laughs) it's so it's it's not like i'm like no like you need to know who i am it's like you're just so annoying you're speaking on something you have no grounds to speak on Mm -hmm. like i don't understand why a lot of 40 year old versions yes (laughs) right yeah um did you get in so did you get into OnlyFans first are you both in mainstream no okay she when did you what uh, when did you start so I started April of 2020. Yes. I launched a free page. And then July 12th of 2020, I launched my VIP page. It, and on OnlyFans, On correct? OnlyFans okay. only, yeah. And I was so scared that first day. I'm like, 
nobody's gonna want to see what i'm doing yeah because i was still bought into they only want to see younger girls did you have an instagram following yeah because my background was in social media strategy and branding i know what works so i did everything i needed like needed to do i built up my twitter my reddit um my tiktok Mm -hmm. my instagram i blew that up i launched the free page i pumped it was back when we could put our only fans link on tiktok oh Oh, you could do that back in the day and let me tell you a viral video i did one it was so cringy too (laughs) and i was and i can't dance and it was like if you're watching this you love and it i I went you love cougars it was so cringy (laughs) and it went viral and we could not keep up with the fans coming in it was like 10 fans a second and it blew up blew up and i'm like oh my god it's tiktok that's the way yeah you know how it changes and so it totally blew up i got to 0.01% 0.01% in six weeks. I became the top MILF on uh, Reddit. And uh-huh. this is Poindexter. Have you heard of her? Uh uh-uh. Okay, so she's this awesome like tech guru out in Silicon Valley. And her school um, wanted her kids out because she does OnlyFans. And she had been the top MILF. And I love her. We've had a lot of conversations. Yeah. And my goal as much as i like her i wanted to be the top milf Uh (laughs) and so i did everything i knew how to do from my corporate career and i applied all of that to my mrs robinson brand Mm -hmm. and i passed her up and i was like oh my gosh this is so amazing and then some guy found me and found my metadata on my pictures and i panicked back then and i shut down my reddit because i was like oh my god like yeah he messaged you and was like here's where you live he called me yeah yeah and i was like holy shit like i need to be more careful yeah and so then i also launched a step family page with this friend of mine i was her pretend stepmom Mm -hmm. and we were making money on my free page her free page my vip her vip and the step family page and it just kept going and we were like holy shit this is incredible and then tiktok started banning me i'm on my ninth tiktok account my 11th instagram account Uh i've lost a 2 million follower page 345,000 they just I'm face banned I am IP banned but anyway I did all of that and then I posted on Twitter um, a bunch of people told me I should be on browsers and Kieran Lee reached out and Mm -hmm. said I agree and I want to direct you and I was in LA and I shot a scene for browsers with Van Wilde shout out to Van I just love him (laughs) Um, I shot with Kieran, I shot with Sheree DeVille, like all these top names, and they've been so helpful and so kind. And um, it's just been a whirlwind from there. And everyone's been awesome. And yeah. another thing I wanted to say that ha- that I see happening sometimes, I will, I know what works because of my marketing background, like as far as content. And I will often offer, um, it's often with younger girls, here's what they want to see from you and what they want to see from me but this is more for your benefit so Mm -hmm. i can shoot this this and this with you and it will help you and because they look at me they might say i was just talking with her about this this morning yeah like oh she's you know really looks she looks okay for 52 Uh (laughs) they don't but if i'm standing naked next to them there's a you know stark difference i have cellulite and i'm a little you know i've got like elephant old people skin and stuff like that they probably think oh i don't want to have her on my page but what they don't understand is that is going to really sell Mm -hmm. and when i tell them that they don't believe me and it drives me nuts i'm like i want to be like i'm trying to help you this will work (laughs) yeah and so when i make those offers they're like okay yeah we'll see and i'm like Mm -hmm. all right like it's really (laughs) your loss Yeah. yeah and so that's also only happening with younger um younger creators on OnlyFans who don't necessarily have a marketing, advertising, branding background. Yeah. Because all the older ones know. And we all know. Like, you know, I shot with Johnny Sins and Kieran Lee and uh-huh. all these Nikki Benz, all these big names. And somebody also said she name drops. It's a big deal to me. I came out of nowhere and I'm proud of it. Like yeah. that I got to do this. I'm not bragging. I'm just like, holy shit. Like I <laughs> like I was just head chaperone for the you know school trip for my kid <laughs> and now I'm naked. Yeah. yeah. Like this is exciting. 
exciting. Let me be excited. <laughs> but yeah, like I, when I tell them these things, it's frustrating. Yeah. Well, it's crazy because I was like a marketing major at the mm -hmm. U of A and I don't think I learned a single thing applicable to like building out my brand. Really? And I'm like, yeah, and I was, I was really good in school. I paid attention a lot yeah. or I tried to, I went to all my teacher's office hours. I learned more about branding and marketing myself just from my own experience and what my intuition was telling me. Right. Like, I don't know. I went to a really good business college, like the Eller School of Management at the U of A. It's like That's top. a wonderful school. Yes. Wonderful school. But I feel like I didn't learn a single. <laughs> what years were you there? Uh, 2015 to 2019. Okay. So and was it based on like digital strategy and uh, you couldn't get like uh it was like you were either marketing or finance or business management like you couldn't get like a specific kind of marketing degree okay Understood. so it's just marketing okay and my take on that would be it's as you know the landscape in anything digital changes so rapidly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it was i don't want to say on the fly learning but by the time i retired um, from my former career, we were going into Fortune 500 companies and it was all about audience reach. And that is still, if you're listening and you have an OnlyFans, please listen to what I'm about to say. Yeah. The first thing you need to do, and somebody said, why would she give away her secrets? Somebody who's good at business wouldn't do that. And that's not true. It's not a secret. It's <laughs> okay. So everybody has an audience. You have to figure out who your target demographic is. Like mm -hmm. who watches you? Is it, what are their ages? Where are they from? What do they like? And then where are they spending time online? Mm -hmm. So maybe like my people, I have a lot of Twitter guys because it's older. Yeah. And I also have my, you know, the ones that like the teacher stuff and a lot of them are on Instagram. So I know where I have to focus my marketing efforts and then do your research. What do those people like to see? You can find it on Pornhub. You can find it. Um, there are, you know, a couple of different research companies find what they like mm -hmm. and do that. And I see a lot of girls doing only girl, girl stuff. That doesn't sell like boy, girl. It just doesn't. And yeah. I do a lot of girl, girl too, cause it's easier, you know, or solo shit, uh -huh. but boy, girl sells threesome sell. And so it's all about your audience and who you're trying to reach. And, you know, when I do TikTok or um, Instagram promo, they're like, do thirst traps. And I'm like, they don't want to see thirst traps for me. They want to see mommy stuff. They want to see teacher stuff. It's yeah. different for me than it is for you guys. They want you guys doing goofy, obnoxious thirst trap stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> With me, they don't. They don't. I mean, occasionally, sure, but that's not my audience. Everyone's different. Like thirst, tra like thirst traps, like the TikTok transition ones. I, it's so hard for me because I love making them, but they don't work for me. They because, don't work for me either. Because I feel like we're very similar because we're both like a little goofy and just like, I don't like obnoxious in a good way. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, I, I always say like, I'm kind of an asshole, but like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not like mean at yeah. all. It's just yeah. like, I'm just, I'm loud. I'm crass. I'm br like brassy. If you're getting into like singing and voice, like how my voice sounds. And mm -hmm. it's like, they don't want to see me like do like a little like swivel dance and then like put my hand over the camera and all of a sudden I'm like glammed up. They don't yeah. give a shit. Like if I do so like a funny dance or like s just like something funny, they like that so much more uh -huh. so like it's just so it's it's, it's, it's interesting everyone's it a lot different what I, i'm sorry i meant to tie back my adhd is all over the place today <laughs> but when you were talking about school they probably didn't get into that because it's not something it's not teachable unless you are working for a company and you need to learn how to um there's this thing called programmatic advertising where they buy and that was my like kind of last job i did mm -hmm. where you are bidding it's almost like the stock market they can't teach it you have to learn it when you get hired like how yeah. a platform runs so exactly i think we learned a lot about like statistics mm -hmm. and how to like see probability and we kind of learned about like demographics and like we learned a lot of like the basics of yeah. things yeah but we i think we were learning a lot about how to like sell products like i think it was weird because a lot of what we learned is like how to sell a cereal box at a grocery store with like product placement and yeah. i'm like that's just not the right. jobs that people are getting into now like this is like maybe 10 years ago but this right. isn't applicable yeah. nowadays yeah. yeah it's so crazy yeah and i don't think they have programs that could do that i think it's 
experience my all of my experience happened on the job because it changed so much and mm -hmm. teaching I remember teaching, I don't want to mention the company's name right now, but they are a Fortune 500 company and they're like, we've been deleting all the negative reviews. I'm like, yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. Like, you have to um, address them. You have to say, I'm mm -hmm. really sorry about this and we'll remedy it. Or, you know, if somebody's giving you a bullshit one, you have to say, I'm really sorry that um, that was your experience. But mm -hmm. from what we're seeing, um, this is what you ordered or whatever it might be. And so, I don't know, like, even the companies, the biggest companies don't get it. Yeah. And one of the things we love about you, and this is gonna sound so weird, it just like finally clicked for me. Like I've been following your page for a long time when you used to uh. just do the things where half your boob was showing. And I'm uh -huh. like, look at her go. Like On TikTok? Um, yeah. Wow. Do you know what I'm talking about? My like, underboob shirt. Yeah. Yeah, my pink one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And you did a lot of videos like that. And I'm like, look at her go. And she doesn't give a fuck. And I was like, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, because TikTok mm -hmm. would register. They don't anymore, which is the annoying part. Yeah. But it was like, it looked like I was wearing a high-waisted shirt. Yes. And then they would never take it down until yep. I think I started getting bought mass reported. Yeah. And then I got my account deleted and then I got it back and then I got it deleted again and then I got it back. And then I was told you cannot use that underboob shirt anymore. And I'm like, that's how I get views. But ever since I got it back the second time, my yeah. videos don't go viral anymore. I'm sure. Seriously. Yeah. So it's like, I probably just need to keep making new accounts, but I'm just so sad because like I used to go viral all the time. Yeah. 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 Right. It's so hard because once you've find that thing and then they tell you that they that you can't do it it's like that's literally what i'm doing like that's yeah. my that's that's my shtick okay yeah. like you can't tell me like i'd not be me it's yeah. just it's, it's it's frustrating yeah and it's so weird because i'll post like five videos basically in the same pose just with different sounds and like one would get removed in the underboob shirt and i'm like they're all the same but only one is getting removed yeah. it's so weird did you did, uh, i don't know like okay so did you notice um when you could like report or like appeal um your TikTok being taken down yeah. you used to be able to write it down and also attach a photo yeah so what i would do is i'd go and i would and i mean this is no shade to any of these women but like magnet um mm -hmm. lizzo like they're literally like naked like yeah. jumping around Rabia out yeah spread legs wet pussy and i'm just <laughs> like honestly i'm jealous that they don't get taken down but like yeah. i'd send screenshots and i'd be like what the absolute fuck but like right. in a, it used to in a work nice, right yeah, yeah. and yeah. in like a nice voice though i'd be like what like why is this okay but like mm -hmm. i yeah. can't do it like da, 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 da. and they'd always bring it back but then they took that feature I know. away that's yeah. actually that was the trick back in the day and now it's like both TikTok and Instagram allow you to be mass reported by bots. So it could be one person not liking you, getting all of your stuff taken down. Yep. And it's really fucking annoying because TikTok and Instagram just don't care about the individual creators enough to fix That's that right. issue. Yeah. Because if they actually look, like if I had someone look at the IP of where all the bots are coming from, it would all be coming from the same place. Yeah, yeah. we all know who that is. <laughs> yeah, we all know because right. it's happening to me right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, we it's got so it. frustrating. <laughs> That's so true. So did you get her involved with the church growing up? Like, how were you involved with the church? This is funny. Actually, I was, wait, I, let me just, I have to say it, and then I'm going to shut up. <laughs> she, I would drop her off because she would ask to go. Really? Yes, because she, I was raised Catholic, and she found a youth group that she loved and a church that she loved, and she would want to go on her own and knew mm -hmm. who she was religiously. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just had I was, to say. I was going to say I that. know. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, like, I chose to, like, go to church and stuff um, mm -hmm. because the church was actually close to, like, like I could walk from my high school to church. And oh, I my went, God. That's the same with mine. Yeah. I blew a guy in the church after school. Oh, yeah. nice. oh my God. <laughs> I did in the parking lot on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know him. I already told you this. This isn't. Who this is it? I'm, I'm not going to say his name. Give me the first letter of his first name. D. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> We've already had this revelation. Twice. <laughs> I know who. That's yeah. the kid that came to the door. Can I say this? No, right. no, no, no. <laughs> That's hilarious. No. But anyway, um, no, I was very. I never I was, liked him. It's fun, mom. I know. Please. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about me now. Okay? I know, yeah. but I never liked him. That's for fine. You. you don't like any of the people I've dated. It's fine. That's not true. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, Literal mother daughter <laughs> fight like, in the flesh. Um, there's a there's a divide. <laughs> there's a divide. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> 
oh no i'm giggly um so yeah it was like my choice to do church like mm -hmm. to go to church and i taught um i was an assistant choir director um for the children's choir for like seven eight years yeah um i did sunday school for two years and then I couldn't anymore, and this is so dorky because um, choir and band got in the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like I didn't play an instrument; I did the kick line um, because I didn't. I actually, it's funny. I played the cello for a couple years, and then I and I chose the cello because it was the only one you could play while you were sitting down. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to stand. Yeah. Um, and then I played the saxophone for five days. And then I quit because it was too heavy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want to play any instruments that require me to carry something or mm -hmm. like do anything. So I was kickline because it was just me and I could just woo, woo, like do what mm -hmm. I wanted. But like, anyway, yeah, choir and band got in the way of um, teaching Sunday school. But I still went to church every Sunday. You know, the you know how like all the old people go to the 11 o'clock in the sanctuary and like yeah. the nice one. I went to the 945 in the gym with like uh -huh. the cinnamon rolls and the guitar and like, you Yeah, know, like, they have the guitar because I used to do like youth group too. And I remember yeah. they'd like play games to get you involved. Like yeah. when I yeah. was uh, in middle school and I used to go to youth group, it's like they use Twilight references because that's when yeah. the movie just came out and they'd mm -hmm. be like, um, and they'd be like, Jacob is like the non-toxic one and Edward is the toxic one. And here is why. And here's how to <laughs> make it biblical. <laughs> yeah. And let's let's tie it into the Bible. And this story turned to chapter whatever. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I was a Sunday school teacher. I was such a goody two shoes in grade school. Mm -hmm. I was I was that girl that was like, if you do drugs and drink, you're going to hell. Like, yeah, I became less prevalent the older I got. But like, I just. I was like a little bit, I won't lie, I was a little judgmental of people who did that. And then I got to college and I like laughed at myself. I was like, what the fuck? Like, what's wrong with me? Why did I do yeah. that? Because then I, I, um, we had a meet and greet with uh, the older kids in kids, adults, young adults, mm -hmm. whatever, in um, the musical theater program. And I pulled one of them aside and I said, hey, if I'm at a party, do I have to drink? <laughs> and if I do, where do I get alcohol? And she was like, oh, no, no, you don't have to drink anything. And I was like, I just feel like I should. And she was like, it's your choice. Like, uh -huh. and I said, so where do I get alcohol? And she was like, there are ways. And like, obviously, <laughs> yeah. she wasn't going to tell me how to get alcohol as an underage kid uh -huh. in, at like the faculty meet and greet but like i eventually found out and then i was like drinking with everyone but like yeah. it was just so that little transition was so funny i was so anxious i was like how am i gonna fit in because i th i heard like when i came here to tour they said it was a dry campus uh -huh. and then like but then i learned everywhere is a dry campus and everyone drinks so like yeah. i was like oh okay like maybe i'll try it and then boom mm -hmm. and then i was just with everyone else, you know, yeah. just doing what everyone else had been doing that I was judging them for. So right. it's so funny because growing up with like the dare meetings, like dare yeah. not to do drugs, they'd be like, people are going to try to pressure you to do drugs. And I don't think I've ever been pressured Never. to take. I mean, the first time I did Molly, I feel like I was kind of drugged because they told me it was basically like weed in a pill. So I took it at school and then I was rolling. <gasps> Oh my um, god. That time, but you know, I didn't <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I thought it was but like no one ever pressured me to do anything. Yeah. No, I, if never. anything, people pressured me to give them drugs. They yeah. were like, "Do you have anything? Do you know anyone that can like get me this?" And it's like, "No, I don't. I'm sorry." Like it, it was never like do this like you should do this mm -hmm. you would benefit from this it was always like where can i get this and mm -hmm. it's like it's so crazy how everyone thinks it's the opposite that's but, um, so true yeah but it's, you <laughs> ideally just mentioned ecstasy um i mean that's what we called it back in the day in the caveman days uh -huh. and when i was a teacher um it was back before i got sober and i was rolling teaching my english class Oh my God. Yeah. And it was an amazing class because I let everyone, I, we had a subject, we had a goal, and they had to accomplish it. <laughs> Probably going to get arrested for saying this. I'm, I'm totally just kidding if you're listening <laughs> and have the ability. No, the statute of limitations is up. But, um, and, and I didn't do it right before school. I just happened to still be rolling and from the night before. Yeah. yeah. Because I was up late. And th the things these kids came up with were so incredible and i just remember being like you guys are so you know it was just weird but um <laughs> and then years later when i got sober um i happened to be at this like um uh, we were not allowed it's not okay to say like i, I was at this 12 step fellowship thing and mm -hmm. um this kid was there and he was like oh my gosh you were my teacher and i went oh 
you were my student. That's what was wrong with you in my class. <laughs> he goes, that's what was wrong with you in my class. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you were the best teacher I ever had. And he's like, were you high every day? And I'm like, no, I wasn't. I just happened to be out partying the night before. And it just kind of carried into that. That's hilarious. Yeah, so that was wild. <laughs> so you were, were you like fully an addict before you got sober? Yeah, so if anybody has seen the documentary um, miniseries called Dope Sick, um, it's all about the Purdue Pharma, um, the Sadler family who owned Purdue Pharma that manufactured Oxycontin. And so mm -hmm. back at the very beginning of the Oxycontin epidemic, I had a dear friend and his family were dentists. And I have endometriosis. Well, I had it really badly. Me too? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We have to talk. I have the... if. It's really bad. So uh -huh. I had 15 surgeries until the final one to fix it. And so I have some a guy for you. But anyway, okay. yeah. So my pain was so bad. And they were having this party one night. And I said, I can't come. Like, I'm in so much pain. He's like, no, no, no. You have to come over. My dad has these samples from this company. It's called Oxycontin. And the farm rep said it's not addictive. And I'm like, oh, my God, really? And it worked, took away my pain. And I'm like, I'm not going to get addicted. I'm not going to have any issues. And I got fucking strung out on Oxycontin so, so badly. And yeah, yeah it was really bad. And I did, I was a big partier. Like mm -hmm. I had fun. I've been roofied before because I was so wild. At, not that saying like I was wild and that, that's what caused it. But yeah, I was just out doing everything. Um, but Oxycontin is what destroyed my life. And mm -hmm. I got sober. Um, clean and sober September 8th of 2003 so mm -hmm. yeah I'm coming up on 19 years and that's probably where Amber got a lot of her you know you have addiction in the family you mm -hmm. need to be careful and yeah and also I feel like in a lot of addiction programs it's like people need to feel like there's a higher power to like look up to <laughs> yeah so maybe like you know religion is usually tied into that I yeah. feel like I mean I was never like addicted but like what's helped me get through the top it's like more like my spirituality like yes. knowing that there is like my higher self has like a vision for me that I have to live up to. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's how I feel like mm -hmm. every single day. And there are people who will say, oh, my gosh, Mrs. Robinson must be on drugs to be able to do this. And no, I am totally clear headed doing <laughs> doing mm -hmm. porn and being naked on the Internet. And we're all just super careful because there's addiction on both sides, every side intersecting. And yeah, were you able yeah. to like sue for getting like Oh, no, I could have. There was a class action suit and they ended up having to pay something billions of dollars to yeah. these families. And I did fill out one of those forms. You know, you get a form like an email like, hey, if you were ever and mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything from it, but I never I was just so grateful to no longer be strung out on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on it. it was horrible. Like even thinking about it now, I I thought I was going to die yeah and, yeah it was terrible i made like a facebook uh post i'm in like some of these facebook groups and i post a lot on this one called tea time so just a little shout out to them but like they're a lot more knowledgeable than i am so sometimes i'll have questions about things that i'm yeah. like not knowledgeable on and like i was watching euphoria and like seeing Ruth's character be addicted to drugs i was mm -hmm. asking like if that was how it's really like or how do people get addicted because i don't like, I think a lot of people are over here shitting on addicts being like, well, they chose to do the drugs in the first place. But what these people educated me on is like people are mostly getting addicted to drugs prescribed by doctors mm -hmm. and then they need their next fix and then they need their next fix. But they never knew they were an addict in the first place. And doctors don't do their due diligence to know yes. if people are going to have those addictive personalities. That's mm -hmm. it. That's exactly it. And I know for me, looking in hindsight, I always had all of the isms of being an addict mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. Yeah. Rue is very um, on brand. Her character is very on brand for um, addiction. When I watch it, I'm like, wow, like they're really, they're really tapping into that, what it really is like. Mm -hmm. um, and so I drive it home, especially to my teenager because, and I think they're one of the most knowledgeable teenagers mm -hmm. on drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll hear, I'll hear people say, like, I can stop any time. It's not about that. Like, if I am questioning whether I'm an addict, it's all about what happens after I take the drug, the drink, whatever it might be. 
Is my does it make my life unmanageable? Am I getting DUIs? Am I getting crazy and throwing people downstairs, which I did once before, and um, back when I was drinking? Um, am I blacking out? Like every I didn't know this. Not everybody blacks out. Like that's usually an really? indicator. Yes, I did not know that. Yeah, I yeah. I only blacked out. I only started blacking out my senior year of college. Yeah, but uh, me and you actually talked about this. Mm -hmm. like, we're like my senior year of college. I don't even know if I was as much addicted to alcohol, but right. in my head, I kept thinking this is my last year to have this much fun. Right. So I need to maximize yeah. how much fun I have. Like right. it got to the <laughs> point some days it wouldn't even be fun but i'm like this is my last time in my life to right. ever do this mm -hmm. so i need to push through right yeah. that's yeah. how i feel about so much stuff like this is the last time i'm doing this i have to do it you know what mm -hmm. i mean yeah. just to like make the most of it even if it's like not even fun yeah mm -hmm. right. which i think now that we're older we're we might be i mean at least for me i'm starting to learn if I really don't want to do something, I really shouldn't be doing it. Like, yeah. there's no ever, like, last opportunity. I mean, granted, for the whole party thing, I think if you're in college, try to live it up. Oh, because yeah. once I hit 23, 24, I don't stay up till 2 a.m. anymore. Right. I yeah. barely stay up past like nine. Drinking. At least, yeah. like, drinking. Like, I stay up late at home just, like, yeah. doing home things. But, like, I'm not out, like, late at night. If I'm out one night a week or, like, even two in a row, if it's, like, some sort of, like, all my friends come together sort of mm -hmm. thing i'm done for like yeah, the whole right. week it's not like oh maybe since you guys are in town we'll go out every night it's like no no no, no we no, need no. we right. need to plan this we can go to dinner and uh -huh. then go to bed at right. 10 p.m like, yeah. Yeah. yeah we can't like oh we're gonna go down to tequila cowboy like <laughs> yeah and spend all night there like i can't do that anymore literally and i don't know if it's because of like my mold i mean i know part of it's because of the mold poisoning but we just did a content trip two days in a row and i feel like death today i yeah. do too we all feel like death and mm -hmm. i'm like is this what aging is like yes. or is it also the mixture of like we put 110 percent of our energy for like over eight hours the past yeah. two days so which one is it it's both i can tell you that because yeah. i've aged <laughs> it's so three hours into it i was done mentally <laughs> and physically like i can only do so much but I knew I had to push because once I get home, I can do everything I have to do from laying on the couch with my computer and my bed. Mm -hmm. um, but aging definitely affects that. Definitely more tired. That yeah. exhaustion just gets worse. And awesome. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but yesterday and the day before, what we all did was really tiring. So necessary, though. Like mm -hmm. it was really I wish we would have gotten so much more content, yeah. but yeah. yeah. That first day, actually, <laughs> afterwards, I was, like, so frustrated because I didn't get as much content as I wanted. And I was really overwhelmed, too, because uh -huh. it was my first content event. And oh, I, like, did Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. So, like, I had, like, so much fun during the day, but I was so anxious, like, all day because I was, like, on edge. I was, like, not thinking, like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? But also yeah. that there was, like, a schedule and we weren't following it. And so, mm -hmm. like, I didn't know that that's, like, kind of normal. So I was uh -huh. like, oh, my God. Like, I'm not I'm not in this place where I'm supposed to be. And, like, da 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 so, There's like, a lot of anxiety with content all trips. All yes. day. It was just building and building and building. Yeah. And so we go home or to the hotel. And I'm, like, laying in bed towards the end of the night. And I would literally just, like, burst into tears. I was like, <laughs> I wanted to cry all day. Like, all. And my mom was like, do you not want to be here? I was like, no, I want to be here. Like, yeah. I'm just really overwhelmed and overstimulated because yeah. we did this all day it's I so just funny he, he say that because i was crying all of tuesday <laughs> in preparation but then i think i cried most of my anxiety way but it was to the point and it's funny because i was interviewing my friend Kristen too and then i did a solo yeah. episode and i was borderline vomiting for my anxiety but also i mean part of it is just like a little ptsd because the person who runs our old agency that we were all part of yeah he would kind of bully me at the content trips to the point i would like he would tell me girls didn't like me or i was <gasps> only where i was because of him and then i would literally i'd feel so isolated mm. that this is like my first content trip i feel like in a while where it didn't yeah. feel like a toxic environment so you at had all the little voice in your head and then you also had him like yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's and right. it's like i don't think any of the girls ever disliked me i just think it was no. him trying to make me feel isolated yeah. but i'm like i've i've only met a few of these girls before for, so it's like i'm just gonna hang out with them for the most part so yeah. it's like i feel safe yeah because um him telling me those things on a content trip just made me feel not safe going on content trips right. you know oh my god it's just like that little 
and now I'm pretty sure he's trying to get my Instagram deleted, but <laughs> we'll see it. We'll see what happens. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Right. Mm. <laughs> but uh, it's it's really cool to be able to do a content trip with everyone and everyone be cool. Oh, and yeah. like it's so, It was so fun. Like, I mm -hmm. yesterday I was like, oh, okay, I cry a lot. Like, and a lot of it yeah. is happy crying. Um, but, like, yesterday um, we were the last people at the house just oh because our, that's a whole different thing. But the <laughs> Uber was, like, taking so long to get there. So we were sitting out, like, in the circle driveway. Yeah. And I was just, like, looking at the view. I'm also a slut for a view. So uh -huh. like I was like so emotional because I watch um like Selling Sunset and like all these places, okay, like, yeah. you know, and the, you see these beautiful homes with these views and like you never think that you're like a gonna live there or even be be there, you know, like be, have, have the opportunity to be in one of those homes and we were mm -hmm. and I was standing there like looking at the view and I just like kind of got a little emotional. I didn't like ball my eyes out like I did when I had my anxiety attack, but like mm -hmm. I just like got a little emotional and I was like, wow, this was like such a great day. And like, I'm really grateful for it. I'm so sad it's over, but like, I'm just, I was feeling so like the energy that I had and that was surrounding me was just so positive and grateful. It was just, oh, yeah, like the opportunity. Shout out to Josh for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The opportunities awesome. we're getting are just amazing. Yeah. <sighs> Absolutely. I want to cry again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's big on crying. Yes. <laughs> How yeah. did you transition from being like a church girl? Like, was there any shame to do OnlyFans where you're like, I was so religious growing up and now I'm going to be like this OnlyFans slut? I say slut very endearingly. Oh, yeah. No, slut is an endearing term to me yes. as well. Um, but I actually, I went through like, I feel like most of the people that I know that were religious, not all, most, mm -hmm. um, went through an atheist phase <laughs> and I did too. It yeah. was like triggered by a guy, which sucks, but like it helped me like actually develop my true spirituality myself and like what I actually believe and not just like, oh, I'm going to church and this is it. Like, you uh -huh. know, like developing my own um, point of view about things. And yeah. so like by the time I decided to start doing OnlyFans, which I thought about it in college also, just to circle mm -hmm. back to like, your mom forced you to do it. Like, no, actually I had been considering doing it for years, but I just never jumped the gun because I didn't realize it at the time, but I didn't like myself. So I wasn't confident enough to do it. Yeah. But um, I made the choice to do it. So in like October of 2020, I said to my mom, I was like, hey, I think I finally want to do this. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I really don't think that you should. Like, you're 25. <laughs> you have so much of your life ahead of you. You need to understand that this is such a big commitment. Yeah. And um, I was like, no, I understand. And I want to do it. And she was like, OK, like, I can't stop you. And if, I, if you're going to do it, like, I'm going to obviously give you the tools to do it well, since I know how to. But like, yeah. it's not like she gave them to me and was like, you have to do this. It wasn't <laughs> some like witch holding a thing in front of my face, trying to hypnotize me into mm -hmm. doing becoming a porn star. It was me wanting to do it and her having the tools to help me do it. So she did. Yeah. And, and shouting you out, people will say, like, how can you shout out your daughter? Well, like. How if can she, you not? How could I not? <laughs> like, Why wouldn't I? If she were a dental assistant starting a practice for like, I don't know, whatever, I would be like, you, you should go to my daughter. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. um, yeah. So in like November of 2020, I started banking content and I started doing like the whole process my mom explained earlier and mm -hmm. like building up my socials and everything. And then I launched my free page on Valentine's Day of 2021. Okay. Um, I launched my VIP page on May 14th of 2021. Mm -hmm. And then it just it kept going from there. And it was like amazing how much like freedom I felt just yeah. like. I don't give a fuck anymore about what people think about me because I didn't realize it, like I've said a million times. But um, I always thought, like, I I'm feeling my feelings. I am who I am. But there were people in my life who were telling me, like, oh, you're being dramatic. Like, stop fake crying. Like, you're not, like, are you really feeling that way? Mm -hmm. um, very similar to, like, you at the content event with, the, yeah. with that guy. And so, like, my whole life, I've always been my authentic self. But then internally, I've been, like, questioning myself, like, oh, my God, like, Maybe I'm just being dramatic, like minimizing yeah. my own problems. So, um, yeah, I just realized that like once I actually didn't give a fuck because my whole life I thought that I didn't. And mm -hmm. then starting OnlyFans and realizing what it actually feels like to not fucking care. I was like, holy shit. Like my whole life wasn't a lie. It was just like. I was so unhappy yeah. because I cared so much about what other people thought, like people pleasing and stuff like that. And I'd say like, I'm still a little bit of a people pleaser, but mm -hmm. um, not like I was like, I put myself equally with other people. Mm -hmm. I put myself first, but then also like, 
we were talking about this earlier. I just love to support my friends. And like, yeah. I get so emotional when my friends are doing what they want to do and like they're being successful or like mm -hmm. my friends who sing, like when they're singing and like, I know that they've been working on this mm -hmm. note for a long time and I watch them perform it and it's like, oh my gosh, they're doing so well. And then I cry and I'm like, I'm so <laughs> excited for them. Yeah. Um, I think the example I used earlier was like Kim Kardashian. Um, mm -hmm. The new episode came out last week for their new um docu-series yeah hulu mm -hmm. show and it showed all the behind the scenes stuff of like leading up to the snl show and i know yeah. that they're still gonna like dive into more stuff prior to snl but then after that i watched her snl show and i was like so i was crying because <laughs> i was so proud of her because mm -hmm. like it showed the show um like their show showed all of the behind the scenes stuff of like how she persevered to get to that point and i was just yeah. like so excited for her and so proud of her even though i'm she's a stranger to me like she's uh -huh. a celebrity i was just so happy for her happiness so like yeah. a lot of my energy is transformed into oh my god are they gonna like me if i do this like i need to help these people i need to do this to like just being like grateful for the friendships that i have and like putting happy energy into it and being like happy for others instead of putting them before me exactly yeah and i think something because it's like i'll be so happy for my friends but there's always this part of me that likes to compare myself to mm -hmm. other people so it's like as happy as i am for them mm -hmm. i'm like why isn't that me and then i start to shit on myself that that isn't me and it's like it's just so it, it's so unhealthy it's, it's <laughs> natural though like the thing yeah. that i always say these days um since learning to love myself through porn mm -hmm. <laughs> is um like jealousy is not a bad thing if it's not rooted in negativity yeah because like like you said like you're so happy for your friends and i feel the same way like oh my gosh i'm so happy my friends are doing this and then i think to myself why am i not doing that and then but then instead of being like shitting on myself now and sometimes like i fall into it we all mm -hmm. do but um i try to um check the facts you know yeah. and it's like i just need to take what they're doing and apply it to what i do mm -hmm. um it doesn't have to be the exact same thing but yeah. like if i want to do what they're doing like i need to find my way to get there right um and it's just taking it's like using new tools i don't know it is and also like the more i think you compare yourself to other people which it is like pretty natural to do i think it's something that you have to unlearn because society mm -hmm especially in like sales environments. I always grew up in sales yes. environments. They try to make you competitive with everyone else to be better than them somehow. So it's like my mindset has always been like, I need to somehow beat them or be better or whatever. And like, it's like been a slow process of unlearning it. But then when you look at what someone else is doing and then kind of realize I can do that too in like my own way, like the amount of opportunities I've got in the past two weeks just from like literally thinking there's no way I'm gonna fail. And yes. there's still that little voice that's like, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. But then I have to stop myself. And I'm like, no, I am going to do this, this and this and just like not let myself. But it's just crazy how mindset can like change anything and everything. So it's like you don't look at your friend mm -hmm. who's making like three times as much as you being like, right. why can't that that be me? You have to look at it like, how can that be me? Yes. And I have to tell you specifically to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know we had I'd mentioned this to you. So after the first day of the collabs, we went back and we were like kind of unpacking the entire day. And we are always drawn to people who are hard workers, people who are there, you know, for the right reasons. And I think everybody was there for that. But mm -hmm. what we were specifically talking about was what a fucking machine you are yes. and how you're doing this. Um, you're doing it right. And mm -hmm. I was like, Adelia did 12 TikToks while we were all standing there. Like <laughs> there was one, you were doing the one about Sharp. Yeah. <laughs> and I was standing there and I think we were having a conversation and you're doing a TikTok. And I'm like, she was pumping it out. Like it's work. Yes. Yeah, it is work. But my point was, I knew, oh, that's what we have to do because mm -hmm. that's what works. So I think that's also age. Um, the older you get, um, you know, I, mom tips. Yeah. The older you get, the more you look and you say, "Oh wow, that's what that's what we need to do." Mm -hmm. And I said, "We need to do more TikToks because that's what works." And yeah, so and not you even motivated just us. TikToks, like TikTok yeah, lives. Have, yeah, TikTok mm -hmm. live for sure. Like my TikToks, I don't know what's been going on with TikTok, but like they they've been doing this thing and it's been happening for a few months and it just won't stop. But it's like they'll push my video for an hour. And mm -hmm. then after that hour, I get no more views until I go live. But then the, with the live, it's not like my video starts showing up on the For You page. It yeah. starts showing up from the live. Yes. So it's and then they just stop pushing out my content at all. Do you engage with your audience within the first hour after you post? Do you reply to comments? 
sometimes okay because i do a lot of too. story replies okay all like, right or not story replies but i'll like reply to a comment and then right. make a video but then my uh videos recently it's like they'll push it out for an hour and i'll get like you know three or four comments and yeah. then that's like it it's like yesterday i posted a video and within 30 minutes i got four thousand views oh my and i gosh. checked it this morning that's and it incredible. was still at four thousand views mm -hmm. and i'm like what it, it was it was in a chicken suit right yeah. there was nothing inappropriate but that's it's just been a struggle with tiktok because i is. know that tiktok is what works yeah mm -hmm. but it's just the targeting of woman man yeah yeah um instagram reels are pretty big right now too they seem to be working as long as your yeah. profile is public yeah yeah my my tiktok reels do pretty well except now i'm shadow banned because i've had four things removed in the past week oh my god for and two On of them were clothes yeah two of yeah. them were clothes oh my for god sexual shit and i'm like well that's crazy yeah, yeah. so it about... sounds like that person <laughs> yeah i got my um two million instagram account banned because they said i was impersonating being her mother and we don't use our real names online, you know, for safety reasons. And people are always saying to us, like, why don't you use your real name? Like, we live in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You can't yeah. just, it's unsafe to do that. We don't live in L.A. where it's nor more normalized mm -hmm. out here. Um, but we just don't. And people know who we are, and that's fine. But um, but at any rate, um, what was where was I going with that? I have no idea. Okay. But, <laughs> uh, oh, about being your mom. Yeah. That's not really, you're not really her mom. Like, why would I ever say I am if I'm not? Because I know what people are going to say. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they're like, why don't you pro post your birth certificate? It's like, no, I'm That's not going to never. Like, why don't you post your social security number, random <laughs> bot man? Like, yeah. I love MILF69. Like, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> I was going to post a picture once you were 18 and us, like, at your college graduation just to show but it that still doesn't show i'm her mom and mm -hmm. you know once you meet us you can just tell her mom daughter yeah. <laughs> like it's very evident yeah but, yeah my friend just had her account deleted also from the same agency but she got it back uh because someone made a fake death certificate mm. of her and who do you think has the money to make a fake death certificate mm. Mm. Oh my god it makes me so mad yeah <laughs> like why how do you have the time how like, like move on move i on. just like i barely have time to do all the things i need to do how do mm -hmm. you have time to like shit on as how is it how do you have time to do like your full-time job and also make like shitting on other people your full-time job it's yeah. just i don't get it and that's what i find offensive like why do that just move <laughs> on. there we go just, no just, on. just be kind like life's too short and mm -hmm. hard and we're not that important. Like, move on and focus on you and get yourself some good karma points back. Somebody commented something negative on my. I don't get. A, I don't get like a ton of negative comments unless it like blows up. Mm -hmm. um, but someone said nobody asked, and I said I replied, <laughs> and I said I hope whatever negative energy is coursing through you today um, subsides. Yeah, <laughs> with a heart. Right. With a heart, because I'm not like gonna be like go fuck yourself yeah. or whatever. I'm just yeah. like, why are you so miserable? Like, go yeah. be miserable somewhere else. <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, do you guys want to plug yourselves with any last thoughts? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just like this has been this has been so nice. Um, <laughs> I've been having so much fun. Um, I'm just really excited that you like you wanted to have us on. Of course. And um, I guess if I had like anything to say, it's just that like. I, people always ask me, like, how do I learn to love myself? And um, it's hard to say because I didn't know that I didn't love myself mm. until I found out what it really was like to love myself. So maybe just like putting yourself outside of the box, you know, like outside of your comfort zone. That's the easiest way to find out how to love yourself. That's mm -hmm. like my biggest thing is how I just want to help people learn, like learn to love themselves. Maybe not the same way I did, but <laughs> in mm -hmm. their own way. Um, so yeah, sorry, that sounds like really preachy. But if you want to follow me on my social media, um, my Instagram is at it's Amber Blake XO. So it's all, most of my socials are Amber Blake XO, but my first one got deleted. So you have to put ITS. It's Amber Blake XO. Mm -hmm. And then my main TikTok is Amber Blake VIP. And then you can find me on Twitter at Amber Blake XO. <laughs> <laughs> and my final words are to work hard be kind and help others and a big thank you to Adelia yes. for having us on <laughs> funny so thing I you know being I always say I'm such a boomer and I just randomly FaceTime people and apparently that's not like you're not supposed to do that <laughs> and so I just randomly FaceTimed Adelia for the yes. you know out of the blue and um just adore her and what you're doing and you're awesome. This energy is like so yes. it's so, so nice. nice yeah <laughs> and if you're into 
MILFs, cougars, stepmoms, or teachers, or older redheads, <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter. It's Mrs. Robinson XO, my 11th Instagram that I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I no longer have 2 million followers. I have like 10,000, I think, but please come follow me on Instagram. And it doesn't have Mrs. Robinson in it because that got banned too. So it's your favorite Mrs. Y O U R favorite Mrs. M R S. That's my Instagram. Um, my TikTok is at Mrs. Robinson and it has two or three ends at the end. One of them got banned, but just Mrs. Robinson <laughs> just like add another N or something. And my OnlyFans you can go to by doing Mrs. Robinson.fans. Um, that's my VIP page. And if you mention this podcast, um, you will get a free full length sex tape. So come on yeah. over, say hi. I always forget to plug my OnlyFans because I'm so used to being censored. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh my God. Yeah. If you want to find my OnlyFans, um, <laughs> it'll be at amberblake.fans. And if you mention that we were on this podcast as well, you will get a freebie freebie mm -hmm. yeah um you can just find my everything at it's deals.com d-e-e-l-z <laughs> nice thanks for coming Yay, on thank you yes. this Yay. is so fun yeah thank yes. you <laughs>